What we're going to be going over here is the reconciliation of our pre-tax financial income and our taxable income. And we're going to calculate the tax expense, tax payable, based on a deferred tax asset and a deferred tax liability. Okay, so this is what we're going to be looking at here. And when you're doing these reconciliations here, you're really looking at your book versus your tax basis differences here. So what we're going to have, we're going to have a, a taxable temporary difference that's going to result in a deferred tax liability. And then we're going to have a deductible temporary difference that results in a deferred tax asset. And, and uh, determining what these deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities are, or the change in our temporary differences, we're going to be able to determine our income here before taxes. But we're, what, for example, we're going to be given our taxable income here, and then we're going to have to determine the change here in those temporary differences that originate during the year, and then we'll back into the income before taxes. So that's how we're going to reconcile our pre-tax financial income here with our taxable income. Okay, so let's start with this deferred tax liability here. So, and this is a taxable temporary difference. And what you have to do is you have to make your comparison here, what your change is during the year here to determine what was originated during the year. So let's start with, uh, let's say we had their deferred tax liability here. That's a future taxable amount here. And uh, well, that deferred tax liability results in a future taxable amount here. So uh, we take the beginning of the year here, year X1, and everything is in, let's just say, thousands of dollars here. So we got 10000 here. So our related temporary difference uh, for this deferred tax liability here of 10000 would be simply your 10000 here uh, divided by the tax rate that we're going to be looking at here is 40% here for the year. So that's going to result in a taxable temporary difference here of $25,000. So that's what we look at at the beginning of the year here, $25,000. And then at the end of the year, we're given here that our uh, taxable temporary difference here is $50,000. So the diff what we had during the year here, what was originated was $25,000. So we had the beginning of the year here, we had $25,000. Now at the end of the year, we got $50,000. So uh, simply the difference or the an increase here of $25,000. So then our defer deferred tax liability tax rate here, let's say, is 40%. We take it times the tax, well, or the temporary difference here of $25,000. That gives us a deferred tax liability of $10,000 here. And then at the end of the year, again, tax rate of 40% times our year end. Uh, Temporary difference here, 50,000, gives us a deferred tax liability of 20,000. So what we have done here for our de uh, deferred tax liability, we had an increase of $10,000 for the year. Started with 10,000, ended up with 20,000, so we have an increase of 10,000. And the reason we're going to figure out our in originated amount here, our increases here, and our deferred tax liability, because that's what our tax expense is going to be based on what we originated for the year. Okay, so now moving down to our deferred tax asset. Well, in this case, uh, the beginning amount here for the deferred tax asset is zero. So related temporary difference here, well, there isn't any. There isn't any. So we start out with uh, our deductible temporary difference here for the deferred tax asset at zero dollars here. Okay, so at the end of the year here, uh, in our example, it's moved up to $90,000. We have a, def a temporary def deductible temporary difference here in $90,000. So our, we have an increase for the year here from zero to $90,000. So originated during year X1 is $90,000. Now that's a future deductible amount. Now that would be a deferred tax asset here. Again, beginning of the year, we have zero times our tax rate of 40%. So zero deferred tax asset at the beginning of the year. End of the year, we had that it increased here to 90,000 times the 40% tax rate gives us a deferred tax asset here of $36,000. Okay, so now we determined here what we originated for the year here for a deferred tax liability and a deferred tax asset. Now we can go down here and figure our pre-tax financial income. The reconciliation here of our taxable income here with our pre-tax income. So this is very basic here. So this is basically what you'd have to do. Our taxable income, we're given that here at $160,000. That's what's known here. Now, we also determine what our temporary difference is here for that related to the deferred tax liability. The originated, going up here, originated here for the year 25,000. So that's a deferred taxable amount here. and. Uh, that is going to be a reduction here from our income before taxes because we're taking the uh, tax, we're 
We're using that up as a deductible amount now, but it'll be a future taxable amount future in the future here, the next years. Okay, and then, so that's $25,000. And now our temporary difference here uh, for our defer, uh, uh, deductible temporary difference here that was originated in for the year here of $90,000. That relates to our deferred tax asset here. So that's the case here where it's going to be a future deductible temporary difference. We're including it in our income here before taxes for the year here. So in the future, we're not going to, we're going to, we've prepaid the tax essentially on this. So we won't have to include, uh, so it's a future deductible temporary difference. We won't have to pay taxes on it in the future. So simple equation here to determine our income before taxes, that would be our X amount here. So we would, our temporary dif difference related to our deferred tax liability, we'd be subtracting that from our income here before taxes. And then the temporary difference due to the deferred tax asset, we'd be adding that here to our income before taxes, you can see. And that would equal our taxable income here of 160,000. So X here, solving for X, move your 20, um, this subtracted amount here at 25,000 from your X here, move that over. That would, uh, what, subtract here from the 160,000. In, or add to the 160,000 here, the 90,000 moving that over here, that would subtract from the 160,000 or taxable income here, uh, just looking at it in these terms here. So solving for our equation, we're going to X is equal to $95,000 here as our pre-tax financial income. Okay, so that's our reconciliation here between our taxable income that was known and our income before taxes or our pre-tax income that wasn't known here. Okay, and then the other thing we have to do is we, our tax payable, that's our turn tax amount. We're using that 40% tax rate here. It's simply the 40% uh, times the taxable income here of 160,000. Just so you know how the 160,000, the reconciliation here. So you had 95,000 here, Subtract 25,000 from it for the deferred uh, temporary difference here for the deferred tax liability. Add back to it the deferred tax asset here or a uh, temporary difference of 90,000. So you come up with your taxable income here of 160,000. Okay, so now let's go down and let's look at how we record this here. So we're gonna start with our tax payable here and then we're gonna have this deferred tax asset and our deferred tax liability. Based on the, those amounts here, the changes in our deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability, and what we have here for our tax payable, we're gonna determine our tax expense here for the year here on our income statement. So start out with our tax payable on our balance sheet, our liability account. That's simply what we calculated here. The 40% uh, in a tax rate times our taxable income of 160,000 gives us that tax payable here of $64,000. So credit tax payable here for $64,000. Now moving over to our deferred tax asset and the deferred tax liability. So again, our deferred tax asset here, what we're looking for is the net increase here for the year here. So uh, looking at our deferred tax asset. At the end of the year, we had the 36,000 here. That's what we calculated up above there. And then deferred tax asset at the beginning of the year, we had a zero amount. So net increase required for the year is $36,000. So here's what we do. Deferred tax asset, we had to debit that here for a zero balance at the beginning of the year here. And then at the end of the year, we required a $36,000 uh, debit amount or increase in our deferred tax asset. So the net difference here between our zero beginning and end of the year 36,000 is the 36,000 net increase for the year. So that's going to go in and that's going to be reducing our tax payable. Our credit amount here in a tax payable will be reduced by our debit amount or increase for the year here in our deferred tax asset. Now moving down to our deferred tax liability, again on the balance sheet, this is our Beginning of the year here, well, you look at it here. So we had beginning of the year here, we had 10,000 here that uh, deferred tax liability here. End of the year, we ended up with a 20,000 amount of deferred tax liability. So our net increase, we increased from 10,000 to 20,000. Net increase required is $10,000.
So again, beginning balance, credit that deferred tax liability for 10,000. Ending balance, we have to end up with 20,000, so we have a net increase of 10,000 for the year. So those amounts go into our tax payable. Deferred tax liability here at 10,000 is going to increase our tax payable credit amount here of 64,000. And then deferred tax asset is going to debit amount here of 36,000. The increase for the year here, net increase, is going to reduce our tax payable here of 64,000. So now our tax expense simply becomes a a plug here between our tax payable and our deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability. So tax payable here, credit 64000 and our deferred tax liability, what did we have? We had a credit there of 10000 here. So we'd add that to our tax payable here. And then a deferred tax asset, we have a debit amount here of 36000 for the year. So that would be a reduction. Uh, from our tax payable. So net amount here, netting out our tax payable with our deferred tax liability and deferred tax asset, we come up with the tax expense here of $38,000. So that's what we would debit uh, in our tax expense on our income statement here. Debit or increase our tax expense for $38,000. That's based simply on the plug here as we went between our tax payable and what our net increase in our deferred tax asset and our deferred tax liability was for the year. Okay, so we've taken care of our recording here. So now let's look at how we'd re re be reporting that here on our income statement for the year. So moving over here. Now this is how we put our income tax expense section on our income statement here for 20X1 based on as what we calculated our deferred tax liability, deferred tax asset, or tax payable, we come up. Okay, so let's just look at our tax. We'll look at our, what we want to calculate is report this tax expense here, and we also want to look at, and how that a tax expense here reduces our income before taxes. So looking at our income before taxes, that's what we calculated above here, that pre-tax financial income of 95,000. That was that X amount here, and then we had the temporary difference for the deferred tax liability, and then the temporary temporary difference for the deferred tax asset here. So solving for that, we come up our equation, and then we knew that our taxable income for the year was 160,000. Solving for that equation, uh, for X here, we come up with that 95,000 pre-tax income. So income before taxes was the 95,000. Now we have to uh, report our income tax expense. Current amount here was $64,000. That was our tax payable. And then the deferred amount here of income tax expense, that's the difference between our deferred tax liability and our deferred tax asset. That the what was originated here in year X1 or the net change here in deferred tax asset and the deferred tax liability. So for our deferred tax liability, we had 10,000 here. And then the deferred tax asset, that's gonna that would, deferred tax liability is going to increase our tax expense here. The deferred tax asset, that was that $36,000 amount, and that's going to reduce our income tax expense here. So netting out our deferred tax liability of $10,000 less our deferred tax asset here of $36,000, we're going to come up with a net amount here, a reduction to our income tax expense here of $26,000. So our income tax expense it's going to be reduced by the deferred portion here based on what the tax benefit, uh, the net tax benefit here between our deferred tax liability and our deferred tax asset. That net amount here is 26000 Redu Reduce the current tax payable of 64000 by that deferred tax amount here benefit gives us an income tax expense of 38000 here for the year. Uh, compare that to our income before taxes or subtract that from our income before taxes of 95000 So our net income here for the year is 57000 So that's how we'd report it here on, on the income tax section uh, on our income statement for 20X1 here. And that's based on what we calculated here for our reconciled our income before taxes here with our taxable income here. And then we had to determine what our tax expense was. The tax payable amount here, uh, that was the current amount. That was the tax payable that we had here. And then we had to separate it out here for a deferred portion, the deferred tax liability and the deferred tax asset. Deferred tax liability increases our current, our tax payable here, the current amount, the deferred tax asset would 
reduce that current amount here of our income tax expense. So netting out our def netting out our deferred uh, amounts here, we come up with. In this case, it was a deferred tax benefit here because our deferred tax asset was greater than our deferred tax liability. So tax benefit here reduces the current amount of our uh, income tax expense and netting those amount out here, then we were able to determine our net income for the year here. So that's that'll take care of our example here and we just looked at how in this summing it up here how we uh, report our income tax expense section here on the income statement. Okay, that'll summarize it.